Hello, everyone, and welcome to our seventh ICAM Foundation webinar. On today's webinar, we will be uh, focusing on the interactive post processing. My name is Alexander Gordon, and I'm joined by my colleague Daniel Wang to help me on the presentation today. So, today we will focus on dialogues and a supplementary function for the dialogues called the MRU, or the most recently used function, which lets you save the last settings you've put on the dialogue for the next time you post process, so you don't have to rechoose every settings each and every time you post. Here's an example of a dialogue that a school asked us to uh, develop to help the, uh, the student learn how to use a machine and how to develop post processors uh, for that specific machine. So as you can see, it's, uh, it can be really complicated. Well, not in terms of setting the dialogues, but the functionality of the dialogue can be really complicated where you would change the settings of some of your feature in, uh, of your machine here, for example, the arc fitting, or that machine is a five axis machine and they can choose if they want to have a three axis uh, output or four axis output or a three plus two depending on what they have. So let's take a look at what's the controls you have available for you inside of a dialogue. So the first one we have is the text control. So the text control is simply text that will uh, that you will put to either tell indication on how to use the dialogues or uh, information concerning a specific section or just for example here we have some edit box that we've put the label next to it to be able to say what that edit box is actually doing then we have the frame control same thing as the text control, that frame control is only visual and it helps groups, items, other controls together uh, just to say those controls are related, for example, here to sequence numbering. So yeah, that way it's easy for uh, the uh, user to know what that section is concerning about and all the feature he needs to select for that uh, sequence numbering, for example. Then we have the button control, for example, here, the OK and cancel. You also have a reset button that you can choose. You have a custom button that you can just develop uh, your own text. And when you click on it, it will do whatever you put in the macro. Or you could call also another dialog. So if you have multiple dialogs that you want to uh, uh, output just to have a more streamlined, uh, not streamlined, but the, like more focused information on each of the dialogues so you're not as cluttered as the one we see here. Uh, you could do that kind of thing. I've talked about the edit box control, which is simply a string, or if you want, you can force it to be numerical, and that way it will output numbers. Then you have the checkbox con uh, control. The checkbox control uh, comes with a label attached to it, so you don't have to create a checkbox uh, check and a text control. You can just edit the label inside of the options, and it will change itself. I will uh, show you uh, after uh, this section of the, uh, of the presentation. You also have the radio buttons. So the radio buttons are a little bit like the checkbox control. However, you can group them together compared to the checkbox, which is each and every single one of them are uh, individual. So using the same variable, you can link them together. And if you click, for example, on the output after tool, uh, the from APT file here would get unselected and the output after tool would get selected. You also have combo box control. Uh, that combo box control is a list of items uh, that you have to choose from and, or leave it as the default selection to change again the behavior or uh, change a variable inside of your post. There's two other controls that I will talk about when we are doing the live demo. Here's another uh, dialogue. This one is focused for production. It's actually a, a laser drilling machine uh, that uh, needs to drill a certain amount of rows. 
for this example here, it's 160 rows. So you have uh, four, uh, three others dialogues that you can, uh, in fact, seven others dialogues that you can use uh, that you have to set for each and every row where you need to select the type of operation, uh, the side you want to uh, to drill from, etc. So imagine if you need to uh, to do one modification and repost, you would have to change all the settings you've done for the 160 holes. This is a lot to do. So this is where the MRU function comes into play. So with just that, you would be able to say if row 147, I need to change it to A minus. Well, I don't want to do every single hole that I did before. So I would just implement my MRU function. And uh, when I do my modification and click on OK, the next time I post, it's already going to be to A minus. And with that, let's jump into Quest. So here I have a, a simple Fanuc 31i coming from our default database that comes with foundation. Again, if you do not know how to access those uh, those databases, you can find them in your tool configuration environment. You go to your ICAM app data. If you click on op open in the sample foundation, you will have those databases that you can use and modify. But I digress. Let's go back to the uh, post-processing. So here I have our basic interface and we are going to mainly use the dialogue editor, the declaration macro and the machine startup macro because I just want to call my dialogue during the machine startup. So to call this dialogue, you would create a custom macro and simply to call the dialogue, I would assign it to a variable, which is the way when we're using functions inside of the ICAM and the function to use is f dialog and then I would input a string and my dialog I'm going to call it test so single quotes in case in the test and that's all I need to do to call the dialog so it's pretty simple and you have uh, to call it out it's just that and Daniel will talk about how to use the results afterwards to create my dialog I just go to the dialog editor and I had my add button and I click on that and I will need to enter a name. So we've entered test in the dialog. The uh, string that we entered, which is a maximum of 16 characters needs to be the same to, uh, for dialog to work. So I'm gonna call it test, click on okay. And then I have my dialog created. So from there, you can select the main window. You can expand it, reduce it if you need to. You can drag and uh, drag to select multiple items, move them around. If you right click on the items, you have utilities where you have some functions to help you align items together, center vertically or horizontally on the dialog frame. Uh, if they are of different size, you can put them to uh, match the size together. So here, we have the controls, so we have our text control, and it's going to bring up when you place it down. It's going to bring up the properties. So you have four sections in each of the properties window for each controllers. You have the general section, which has the position, the size, and also if your control supports a variable, you will need to enter your variable name in this location. Then you have the control specific. So if everything that is related to the specific control here, it's a text, so it's only a label. And in the middle, you have the help tip, uh, tip text. So for controls that you need to either select something or enter a value, you can put the help tip to, if you put your mouse over it, yeah it will bring a pop-up and give the explanation of what that box or checkbox is doing. Then you have the logical state expression that if you have a variable so or an expression that is either true or false, you can disable or, act, uh, or enable the control uh, using that. So for example, I could have a checkbox that when I click on that checkbox, it will activate another 
uh, another section. And I'll give you a quick example a little bit later. So here, it's just like that. Then we have the button control. That if I click, uh, I can put, have the button type. So here I could say reset, and it would reset automatically all my, uh, my data. We have the edit box, huh? which is you can put an initial value, make it that is editable or not. Huh? And if you want, you can put the numerical value only and put them in a max if necessary. And you would assign this to a variable here. For example, we would call it frog name for the programmer name. And for the, uh, for the help text, we could go enter programmer. If I go on test, just hover on top of it, I would have enter programmer name. So as we uh, as we can see, currently when I create my dialogue test, my uh, the the name of the dialogue has been put to test. Well, the captions. So if I want to change that, I can simply click right click on the main window, go to properties, and then I have my caption where I can uh, change that. The dialogue name here is the one that you'll see in the dialogue editor list and must be the same as you're going to be using in the machine startup for the F dialogue uh, function. So here I could just dialogue test. And this is case sensitive, so it's just going to change the name. And I have some checkbox. This is the label I was talking about. So here I could go with cat cycles and decide if I want it to be checked or not before. I'm going to leave it as not for now, just for the sake of our example. And here I'm going to put a variable. I'm going to copy that variable because I'm going to need it. And I'm going to create a radio button which this one, it remembers another one that I had before, which I will uh, bring up for, uh, for the second radio button. So here again, same thing as the checkbox, you have the labels. So we're gonna do the same thing as the other one, just to show you a different way of uh, implementing your uh, control. And I'm gonna put a second one. So here, the variable remembers the last one if used. So if I change this, uh, if I had changed this to underscore two, for example, instead of rad, it would have select underscore two instead. So here, I'm gonna put point to point. And I don't want it to be the initial selection group. And what I'm gonna do here, just to show you how it behaves for the, uh, for the logical state expression. I click on OK, I'll select those two and utility line left, so they are aligned together. We have our frame that I was talking about here. Like that. And I'm gonna make that frame a little bit bigger. Take those two, uh, those three, and put it down a little bit. You also have or drop box, uh, so the combo box control where you can either put your entry here, so for example A, B, and C, or if you have a sequence on an array that you've built up uh, before calling your variable, you can use that in the choice variables. So you could use a. Uh, uh, a sequence that you would build dynamically before calling your dialog and use that to change what's the available entries. And again, here, we would have to put a, a variable. One that we didn't see in the pictures before is the list. So it's the same thing as the combo box. However, you will see all the choices appearing at the same time. So machine box two because
because I don't want to assign them to the, I can't assign them to the same variable for that one. That would be, uh, uh, that would be, uh, that would not work correctly. I can choose what's my initial value I want to have. So the combo box and the list box is the same thing, just the way the information appears. Here, it's uh, for a combo box, it's less cluttered, but you don't see all the choices available to you compared to the list box, it takes more space, but you'll see everything at a glance. So it's always depending on how you want to show your information. Uh, you want it to be easily accessible, or if you have a lot of controls to put on, maybe the draw and the combo box would be better than the list. Same thing for the check box and the radio button. If a check, uh, if you have two radio button saying the two states of what it's going to do, it talks more to the user. For example, here it's either can cycled or point to point for drilling, uh, drilling cycles. Compared to can cycles checked or not, do you want to only output drilling cycles or you don't want to output the drilling cycles? So again, checkbox takes, uh, takes less space, but the radio button will talk, uh, will talk more to the user. You also have the picture control, which would put the picture in the background of your uh, dialog. So for example, you could have a picture of your setup and you, if you need to enter different dimensions to control uh, the output of your uh, tape, then the user would have to enter your uh, would have to enter the, uh, the values necessary. So now you have the test button that I've shown before. Here, the logical expression is not working on the test. You need to do an actual posting to be able to set it. But here, you see you can select those. You have the drop uh, the drop down menu. If I click on OK, it will just close it. So now let's start. Play. I'm gonna start Janair. Sorry, it's on the other screen. And I'm just gonna go to my machine startup. Where's my dialog? Oh, it's at the end. I'm gonna put it. Okay, so let's run to the dialog and then we're gonna step it. And now it's called a dialog. So as you can see, the can cycle and the point to point radio buttons are not selectable. But if I click on the can cycle, since the checkbox is a logical flag, either true or false, then I can use that as a uh, activate or deactivate button. So now I can do the selection. Obviously my post and my dialog is not doing anything on that one because I haven't set it up correctly. So I'm going to leave it to Daniel to show you how to uh, use those information and also how to implement the most recently used function. All right, thank you, Alex. Um, so here you guys can see on my screen um, just a very simple example of how we're going to be testing our um, our dialogue here. Um, but beforehand, I would like to put up a post for you guys to um, just fill up really quick um, before we continue. In our case here, um, the machines are going to have different linear axes um, depending on the machine we choose so that when posting, we can check for um, over travels. Um, please make, make note of the variable here, machine one underscore box. Um, that's going to be uh, important for us. Uh, we also have our drilling options here, uh, whether it's uh, going to output in a can cycle, so your G81, for example, or uh, in point to point, so in G0 and G1. Uh, we have the variable here, uh, drill options, which is controlling the two radio buttons. And then we have a couple comments here. We have the programmer name, the revision name, and the revision comment, um, all with their variables. So program name here, a revision number, and a program comment. Um, for this uh, example, we will not be um, using the list box or the um, or the checkbox here, but the, the same logic and the same uh, method of it, implementing the, the other buttons um, are the same. Um, so let's start writing the macro. 
um, you can call the dialog box at any time in, in the program, but ideally you would use it in the startup. Um, so that's what we're gonna do today. Um, so I have this, uh, just a blank macro here with the dialog and here are my uh, or my variables that I've declared in the um, declaration macro here as global and uh, they're all strings for a reason. And so we had the machine one box, the drill option, the program name, the revision number, and the program comment. And this is the, the same command that Alex used to call the dialog. Now to, to get the information of a dialog here, we'll be using the case statement. And the output of this variable here would actually be um, what, you, what buttons you click. So the okay, the cancel, or the reset. We'll be using a case statement here and we'll have um, two cases here today. We'll have the okay and the cancel. And then we'll end our case here. Now, um, generally you may not have the cancel, right? The, the cancel will just exit out of the, um, of the dialog box and continue post-processing as normal. But if you were to, let's say, stop or you know, stop the process or do something, then you could do it uh, you know, under this statement. Um, but we're just going to use the okay here. Um, so the first thing I want to do is do is play with the machine one box, which was the options of uh, machine A, machine B, or machine C. Uh, and to do that, we'll use another case statement. And again, we'll use it on the variable um, machine one box. And then we have our three case statement. Now it's a string for a reason because those um, the output uh, of whichever machine you choose there are I'll put it as a are saved as a string so our first string was machine a our second option was machine B and our third option was machine C and then we'll end our case here and I was saying all we're going to do here is simply uh, change the limit using limit x-axis and then changing limit to let's say 25 uh, machine b to 50 and then machine c to you know 75. Um, you could do more you can do something fancier but for our situation we'll just keep it simple um, for the drilling option here same thing same ideal we'll be using a case statement and then now instead of three options we'll have two options so we have either point to point or um, can cycles. So when, when I choose point to point, I wanna make sure that if there's a cycle that came from the cam system, I wanna output point to point instead. To do that, we have a, a system variable called CYCAFL. And if you set this to false, then it will output in point to point format. And if you instead keep it to true, um, then it will output can cycles. Uh, and the default value depends on how you answer the, the question in the questionnaire. And finally, we want to output the, the last the comments here for the programmer name, the revision number, and the programmer comment. Um, I don't really have a preference on how or when it's output, so I'll simply display them um, in, the, in the tape file. So I'll just use the display command here. And then the wildcard, uh, just so that I put whatever the programmer decides to put inside of the var uh, inside of the box, then we're simply just going to output it. Do this two times. And, and there you have it. That's how you create a, a dialog box. Right, uh, you create a dialog box and that's how you generate the information or set some settings or output some information to the tape. And, and that's, that's great. So that's how you would do it. You could do it for the cancel, you can do it for the, um, the other buttons that are available. Um, and you can set your settings however you want. Uh, the more boxes you have, um, the more you have to write. And you don't have to do case statements or you can do your if statements or a, a different other loops, uh, whichever you prefer. Um, but what we're more interested in is to use the um, most recently used 
command, right? Because you don't always want to type everything or retype everything if you're posting a couple times. Uh, to do that, here we'll go to MRE setting, and there's three important things to know. The handle, the key, and the file, which is more or less important, but still very important. So we'll start with the handle here. The handle, which I just called MRU handle, um, is essentially the the file that's um, kind of kept in memory with by the post, um, and then it's uh, also set, saved in a in a number that is going to be used, right? So it's the file that you want to use, and then inside are what we call keys, which are the the separators, which are say which saves all your um, parameters that you want to save. Right, and we'll learn how to save, how to get those parameters. And um, uh, what's good about this key is you can have in one file or one handle, you can have multiple keys and they can all be different names, right? They can be set on a, um, a username, uh, username dependence or you know your file name dependence or however you want to control it, that's how you would in a key. And so instead of having multiple files, you can just have one file that contains multiple keys to s store multiple, uh, a lot of information. So here, um, to create the handle, right, uh, we're gonna use the function fmru. So all the mru functions will start with, uh, with $fmru, and then we'll open, and then we'll put in the mru file variable. Now for the MRU file, um, this can be uh, many choices. So you can have a file that you saved on the server drive. So you could, you know, hard code the path here inside of a string. Um, if you leave it blank, then it's gonna take the default path. So then whether if you installed it in an application data, it's just gonna save it in the application data and then load it from there every time or you can save it anywhere you really want to. Right. Um, if you don't give it a name, don't give it anything, then by default, it's just gonna take the name of the post and then have an XML uh, as a format. Now in my case here, I'm gonna save it in my ICAM app data location. Uh, to do that, I'll use the fget environment function here and look for ICAM app data. Then I'll concatenate to it, or add to it, um, a file that, I, that I'm just gonna call dialog and .mru. So this is just a standard text format. Again, if, there, if you don't give it an extension, it's gonna have an XML format by default. And finally, we have the mru key, which is what separates all the different um, you know, sections inside of the file. Now, again, you could use it per uh, username basis, or in my case here, I'll do it by um, CL file basis. So I'm just gonna get my name of my CL file by using the F base name, the CL name, and then I'll strip away the, the period. And that's how you would you know, get your MRU file, which key you want, and what's the handler that's just a number that we assign to the file. To actually get the parameters, we'll use the function get param. And this takes the handler, right? Because it needs to know what file you're trying to get, which key, and then what it's saved to. So in my case here, I'm gonna save some something later on under the variable machine choice inside of that file. And then I can do this for all the variables that I want or all the information I wanna save. So in my case here, I'll have a machine choice, a drilling option, a programming name, a revision number, and a program comment. And I wanna send this to my dialog box. So remember these, um, 
these variables that I use for variables. I can write to them so that the first time when it loads, it gets the information from my um, F MRU file. So that's a way of sending, getting the parameter and then sending it to the dialog box. Um, now we wanna handle situations where we've never created this MRU file. So we'll have an if statement and then we'll get, we'll use the get key function here. And then it's gonna try to get the handler and the key. And if it returns greater than zero, that means it found something, then give me get the parameters. If it did not, um, then you could, you have the option, right? You could just say, well, don't do anything. Or, you know, in my situation here, I'll have the programmer name to be my uh, my name, so I'll use the fget environment variable. I'll get the uh, username environment variable to to put the programmer name right away at the beginning. So essentially, that's that's really the the bulk of the code on how to get the parameters and how to you know create the mr uh, create the mru file. What's a key and what's a handle. Going back to our dialog here, we want to now save these parameters, right? Save these parameters, we'll use, again, uh, fmru setting, and then it's gonna be set param. Again, the inputs are very similar uh, as before, All right? So we'll get the, we'll put the handler, right? Because we know, or the handle, because we know, need to know the file, the key, Right, what's the, where do I want to save it? And then the what I want to save. So in this case, I want to save machine one underscore option, uh, box. And then again, you can do this for all your parameters that you want to save, right? In my case, I have all these drill options, a programmer name, the revision name, a number, and a programming number, right? Uh, don't forget to put it inside of a variable here so they can actually execute the, uh, the function. So that's how you, essentially, that's how you um, save the parameters, right? This is the where and this is the what, and these are the files you want to save in and under what key, right? And finally, before you f finish things up, you want to make sure you close the file. So you can use the function fmru close, and what's the file you want to close? All right, so now let's get a test in and let's see um, how it works. So here I'm just using a very standard, I, I think this only has a one drilling cycle. Yeah, just one drilling. So we're gonna hit play. Remember the first thing that happens is the dialogue. So, all right, so we get a dialogue. So we have our machine B here that was set as a default value. Same thing with the can cycle. You can see here that I have the programmer name set to, to my name, right? Um, because this is the first time there was, uh, the file was never created, therefore the default username here from the environment variables was set. All right, so let's just put some comments here. Let's say revision B, we'll test B here, hit okay. Great, we didn't get any errors. Um, and we're gonna roll back here. And then when we hit play again, you can see that it reloaded the information that I saved previously, right? I had a machine B selected, I had the can cycle selected, my name, revision B, and test B. And if we go, let's say, to machine A, and then we change the values here, hit OK, right? Go back, hit play again, and then the values that were used previously are saved. So that's essentially how MRU works. And you can do really funny things and a very expert level things if you want to, but this is very the basic level of you know saving information um, and then reusing it the next time you post. All right, so that we can do it again. We can do it as many times as one, and the information will be saved. We can do it for machine C, for example, also. All right here, we'll change our name. All right, we'll put something else. Roll back and then the information is safe, right? So essentially, um, if, you, if you have multiple boxes, you can do the same thing. Open, load your MRU file, get the key, get the handle, save the information, close the file.
right? And and that's really the the gist of how you get the use the MRU and everything here. The case statements are really the simplest way of getting um, you're reading the the information from a box uh, from your dialog box. Uh, and a quick thing here, as you can see, we had our can cycles here, um, command lock. And again, like I like showed, you can have logical statements between where, you know, in my machine C here, I had this box disabled. And then, you know, machine A and B uh, doesn't have this box disabled. And I can show you guys um, quickly here the logic here. So I'm reading a machine one box. So that's whatever resulted in this um, combo box here. And that will influence my other um, checkbox here. So it's really interactive where things can be crisscrossed um, inside of a dialog box. Right. Um, that will be all for me today. Um, thank you for joining us today, the webinar here, and hopefully help you guys um, get an idea how you can get your post more interactive. Uh, and you know, I'll put some information or you get some inf more information from a programmer. Um, so if you guys have any questions, um, we'll be we'll be here to answer them. Otherwise, thank you very much for joining us today, and I hope to get see you guys next time.